situation. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's what I, I, I'm trying to say. This situation that we're all talking about, we also need to be sure of its extent. And by that, I mean, how do we know how many children really are in danger? How many women really do not have access to reproductive health services? What is the position with our youth? And the only way we can know these things is having a proper data. And that takes us back to the census. You see, because you cannot manage what you do not know. The only way we can monitor these things and we can have solutions to these things is, first of all, that we have a proper census. It's the census that will reveal the proper demographic profile of this nation so that we'll know whether we've exaggerated some of our problems or we have underrated some of them. Okay. Of course, we have a general idea. I agree with my brothers and with everybody here what we've said. But I'm saying that we need to be specific. The only way we can be is to have a census. It's a census that would actually tell us Okay, in the north, maybe birth has reduced as a result of the vulnerable situation going on there. Maybe truly human beings have reduced. Maybe in the south, education is actually getting better and it's, giving, it's leaning towards entrepreneurship, which is helping us. If we do not have a census, we're still beating our fist in the air. We okay. do respect. Okay, now that policy framework you spoke about, when was it sent to the president? We and when are you expecting his reaction? Any time from now. He had promised it to be any minute. It could even be today. Any minute from now. Well, he's not around, yeah. is he? I'm saying when he returns, <laughs> you know what I mean. When he returns, any time from now, it should be signed. We actually thought it would be signed a few weeks ago. But I think because of some other things. When it's signed, but the major thing we also ought to do is to take a census. Without a census, we are beating our fist in the air. Okay, they've talked about youth empowerment. I've also talked about it. We talked about, okay, how many women really... I have access to reproductive health services. What is actually, how many children really are in primary school now? So how do we plan for the next one? How do we know whether we even need that China's position? So I take it that this framework also contains um, a recommendation for there to be a census ASAP. We have actually done that since. We've actually advised the federal government that we need a census. But you know that the commission does not take census until Mr. President gives his approval by way of a proclamation. And gives the money too. Until then, <coughs> the money does not come from Nigeria. Let me be not all the money. Because census is capital intensive. A lot of our multilateral organizations assist Nigeria in take in, um, help in financially during census. Okay, um, we need to begin to wind down. So let me begin with, we'll let, end with you, so that you cement it. <laughs> wrap it up. <laughs> so you wrap it up. Show yeah. way forward. Now, the key problem we have, I mean, we could build a bridge, we could provide infrastructure, those are easy. Equipment works, they can just put them down. But to get value reorientation is very difficult. And we have to start finding ways to get that done. So looking at the population and how to get value from it. We need to find avenues to reach the ordinary person and to be able to reorientate on the right values, why they should do what they do, and what's the impact of what they do in the, in the, to the larger society. So government has to really, like you mentioned, the National Orientation Agency, we need to go back to a real mass uh, mobilization, especially using uh, religious institutions where most people subscribe and where you can really, really get their attention. Government should make use of those resources. Pastor Fowler, <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, he has said they should mobilize with pastors. I, I wish the policy that they, are, they want the president to sign has been reviewed by all of us. Because what then happens after he signs, then they bring the policy for us to implement. I suddenly realized that section 222 is against <laughs> section 222 of your holy book. Again, po population doesn't grow outside. Population grows in people's bedrooms. <laughs> And therefore, you must always remember that fact. It's not like school that you can force people to go to school. So in even talking about the policy to deal with that, the people must be involved. Uh, so the first thing I want to talk about is why there must be leadership. Leadership to drive these issues about our population and human capital. You know, you know um, our Minister for Petroleum is the president of Nigeria. To talk about how important petroleum is, he's not the Minister for Education. Is not the minister for health. So in this country, we can't delegate the role of managing the petroleum industry to any other person except our president. And two presidents have done that. But we can delegate, actually outsource, education and health. 
human capital to others. Talking about the lack of leadership at the core level in terms of this issue. So one of the things I think is that leadership must take responsibility. I think we should have a national plan of action for human capital development. Population is a part of it. Education is a part of it. Health is a part of it. And that was what Big Gates said in that speech. He said you have an economic growth and recovery plan, but the portions related to human capital is weak. A friend of mine said, no, it's not weak. I said, have you read the policy? He said, I've counted all the words related to education and health. It's so few. And there are no specific actions. So leadership is important. Number two, mobilization is important. We need to mobilize everyone uh, to make sure we manage our population. The last one I want to talk about, and of course, you know my passion for education, is the fact that but I've said this so brilliantly, uh, somebody who goes to school uh, will likely have less children. A lady who goes to school will ensure her child goes to school. A lady who goes to school will ensure her child gets immunized. A lady who goes to school. The importance of education in all of this cannot be overemphasized. And education, I do not mean schooling alone. I mean the fact that people's mind, and that was what Sharon said, the ability for people's mind to see it. And I have that sense of responsibility because I've been taught correctly what is expected of me. Except okay. we have all of that, we're into us trouble. Yeah, thank you very much. I must first of all agree with my brother, but I also disagree on the population policy. I'd like to let you know that we did not single-handedly prepare it. All the MDAs, NGOs, multilateral organizations were involved in the preparation. That's what we usually do, to get everybody's views. And we believe that it will be a better one, it's an implement on the past one, and Nigerians will benefit. But okay. I must say this, Thank you. in all of this, census is key. Okay. It is Thank a priority you. of our priorities. Thank you. Abin Bola Dain, Commissioner National Population, Lagos State, Shion Olu Alade, Human Capital Development Agent, and Yami Fayami, HR consultant, or should I add pastor as well? Yeah, it goes. Thank you all for sharing <laughs> your thoughts with us. So, as we'll be back in a moment. Please don't go away. <laughs>